The opening shot of the 2014 documentary Citizen Four may be my favourite opening to any film I've seen yet, non-fiction included. For some reason, it may be the incredibly unconventional staggered slow motion where normal 24 frames per second footage has been slowed down. It might be the clear, intriguing monologue that sets the tone of the film and seriously grabs your attention with its highly unconventional content. As I've become more and more interested in the documentary form, I watched the film again recently. With the excitement of knowing I'd be introduced to this amazing story with this shot. And again, I was blown away by how immersive this scene was to watch. But something kind of bugged me a little. In my memory, the film very much began with something truly spectacular. But in reality, there's a small piece of information that the director wants you to know beforehand. It's this. I started thinking about why. What difference would it have made if this little sample of text was never included? I started thinking about the relevancy of both scenes. What does the information about the director have to do with the film? What does the first contact with Edward Snowden have to do with the overlying subject of mass surveillance? Why were we introduced to the film Citizen Four by these two very different scenes? I'm going to come back to this question a little bit later on in this video, because first I'd like to present an argument that may help us understand the intentions for both of these scenes. As I understand it, there's a debate amongst documentary filmmakers regarding the authenticity of the craft. It's understood that while in any documentary the first cut that's made introduces a subjective take on the story that's being told. This makes it incredibly difficult to maintain an objective truth in a format that inherently utilises storytelling techniques to craft a narrative digestible for its audience. It's this paradox of knowing that you're taking creative liberties in how the film is edited, maybe that it was filmed in a certain stylistic manner, there's a tone to the music that's added. A filmmakers want to create something interesting and digestible for the audience to enjoy, but still search for the truth in a myriad of events that have been captured and put to cinema. In this particular case, while researching the argument, I was presented by the notion of honest direction and emotional revelation. Honest direction is the idea that the film must do all it can to preserve the original nature of the content it utilises to construct the film. Documentaries such as the 2019 Apollo 11 or 2011 Samsara utilise beautiful footage of events that tell their own story and grip the audience through the visuals while utilising the audience's own knowledge of the subjects. Very little contextual information is used and it makes for a very visceral experience. These films do such a great job with contextualization and immersion through real spectacles that the inclusion of narration that you might find in an ever so popular David Attenborough documentary isn't necessary. And while talking about the man that is David Attenborough, we could even argue that the authority that he brings to his films through narration introduces a completely different dynamic that is hard to find in any other case. The authority is, in my opinion, never utilised for unethical purposes, however, it could be argued that the status of the person narrating a documentary should never be relevant, especially in the context of a nature documentary. I do really like David Attenborough and his documentaries, um, I'd just suggest watching until the end of the video to see what I mean by this critique. A documentary technique I found to be an embodiment of honest direction is the cinema variety style of documentary. This is also known as direct cinema. 
Direct cinema doesn't allow for any kind of special lighting, interview questions, voiceover, narration, or even fades, which are these small editing techniques to signify a beginning or an ending. The goal of direct cinema is to portray events as they happen and capture details in a manner that's as hands-off with the subject as possible. This essentially means you're not allowed to use anything but a camera and a microphone to capture the events that are happening in front of you. Frederick Wiseman's groundbreaking 1967 film Titicut Follies is a great example of this. It's a very difficult film to watch as it covers the dehumanization of mentally ill patients residing in Boston's Bridge Water State Hospital. The film features force feeding, stripping patients naked, and guards verbally assaulting inmates amongst other inhumane acts. Wiseman captures this scene and moments of history as a fly on a wall, practicing as little interference as possible with the subjects at hand. Wiseman has said himself that he chose to capture audio himself to focus on the most intriguing parts, but otherwise had no input on the patients or members of staff that he was filming. The approach of honest direction can produce some very interesting results and can even provide some powerful images given the subject of the film. Although I would say it's very easily criticised by its lack of defined structure and information and in some ways the amount of interpretation that the audience has to undertake themselves can be misleading um, based on their own interpretation of the film and it doesn't utilise context in a way other documentaries do. The argument for emotional revelation comes about through the flaws of honest direction. Where it's crucial for documentary films, good films, to accurately discuss the human condition and reveal events and characters honestly, it must do so in a manner that's approachable by its audiences. It's not enough for documentaries to quote statistics and facts when its audience can't relate to the subject. This is where emotional revelation becomes very important. I found that films like Blackfish, Man on Wire, Exit Through the Gift Shop, and yes, Citizen Four, are all proponents of emotional revelation. They all keep the audience enthused through the very personal storytelling of events and characters. These characters often tell us more about the story than any kind of statistic could. The documentary Man on Wire tells us of Philippe Petit's daring but illegal high wire routine across the two World Trade Center buildings. The film features interviews, voiceovers and testimonials of the events that transpired telling a gripping story of the build-up and ultimately the walk that Philippe takes between the two towers. These storytelling techniques tell you about character and allows for inside perspectives you ultimately wouldn't get from regular footage of the event. Arguably, the footage from the event is the least exciting part of the film, in comparison to hearing Philippe talk extensively about the huge undertaking that was the preparation of the walk. The way the film is presented falls under the expository documentary. This is a type of documentary that allows for filmmakers to clearly tell a story through the use of A and B roll, voiceovers, interviews, and all kinds of techniques that you might think of when watching a documentary, as this is the most common technique for producing a documentary. The main appeal is that by using these techniques, you can very coherently tell specific stories with every tool at your disposal. If you'd like to address the audience directly, then you should do so. If you'd like to reenact certain situations, then you should do so. There is so much about this type of documentary that can be constructed that the filmmakers are free to put across a point that has been very clearly thought out and with careful detail. There is little room for misinterpretation in an expository documentary, which I think may be my biggest problem with it. When you have very little room for misinterpretation, it also leaves any kind of room for interpretation from the audience either. I remember watching Michael Moore's 2004 documentary, Fahrenheit 9-11, where this was said. When the second plane hit the tower, his chief of staff entered the classroom and told Mr. Bush, the nation is under attack, with no one telling him what to do and no secret service rushing in to take him to safety. Mr. Bush just sat there and continued to read 
my pet goat with the children. As Bush said in that Florida classroom, was he wondering if maybe he should have shown up to work more often? Should he have held at least one meeting since taking office to discuss the threat of terrorism with his head of counterterrorism? Moore's narration is very effective at propagating a single point of view that's very critical of Bush's response to 9-11 and manages to get across certain ideas that, while aren't completely factual, seem to make sense to the audience. It's the expository techniques that have been used which show his perspectives clearly, without any kind of reflection on any other argument. It's emotional revelation that's made to look like honest direction in a context that's very divisive, which can be very persuasive to some. I think for my last point, I'd like to go back to my original example of Citizen Four. The sentiment of truth being the utmost important aspect of a documentary is shared very seriously between filmmakers. I think that Laura Petois, the producer of the film, has done a very good job of that too. But I'd like to present this film in two different ways that will hopefully highlight what I think is a very important distinction for filmmakers and audiences to realise. We can talk about the film Citizen Four in two different ways. One way would be, Edward Snowden, former NSA operative, reveals private and confidential information to foreign governments regarding the effort to prevent domestic terrorism within the US. Another way to describe this would be, Edward Snowden, former Special Forces personnel, releases documents to Allied nations in an effort to shed light on the NSA's undisclosed tracking of US and international citizens. Now, both of these statements are very true. However, they both allude to different ideas. The overarching approach to construct these statements are whether or not to follow a literal or an essential truth. These aren't necessarily techniques for making a documentary, but ways of looking at any given situation. By approaching a subject based on its accuracy of events, we benefit from knowing the details necessary to assess a situation. This assessment based on facts is a reasonable way to come to a conclusion on your given subject. A literal truth is constructed this way. However, without insight or analysis to the situation, we may be easily misled by context or other non-inclusive facts. From my experience, an essential truth is a lot more valuable to the audience than a literal truth. While the latter withholds any judgments on the subject and presents it in an unbiased way, it wouldn't be useful in revealing an insight that's carefully assessed, one that matters to its audience members. An essential truth is just that, one that requires a subject to be truly understood. Looking at both of these statements, we can assess ourselves what kind of person Edward Snowden is, and so I'd say that the problem that audience members face is deciphering between them both. The face value of a documentary is only worth as much as the filmmakers behind it. Context and motive are huge factors in what kind of truth a documentary will tell you. So that's where I stand with the opening to Citizen Four. The text scene offers us a literal truth to the reality of the situation, one that we have to understand in order to process the events that follow. The scene I love so much gives us an essential truth that is so insightful to the reality that Edward faces before the events of the film. I believe that too much of one and not enough of the other makes for a misleading or a difficult film to watch. But by understanding the film and what's necessary to telling a gripping story, you can make something very relevant and true to documentary form. At the end of the day, documentary is an art form that demands both honesty and manipulation. Rachel Kammerman I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. It's been a while, but I'm excited to do these when I can. Hopefully you've all seen the documentary I released a while ago, but in case you haven't, I'll leave a handy link to it on the screen now. If you'd like to watch another documentary I've worked on, I'll leave Connor's Fantastic Factopia in the description of this video. Now, if you've got this far into the video, I'd like you to write 
baby yoda diapers in the comments of this video okay i hope you guys have had a great new year my name is james hayes and thank you for watching